Roma Bunyaso tonight. History is made as Adama Barrow is sworn in as the new Gambian president in Senegal. Yaya Jame refuses to quit. Anxiety in the Gambia over the incursion into Banjul by Senegalese troops. President Mohamed Buhari proceeds on 10-day leave to the United Kingdom, meet service chiefs prior to departure. And expectations are high as Donald Trump is inaugurated tomorrow as the 45th president of the United States. And on business news tonight, federal government raises nearly 215 billion naira in local currency bonds as the debt office commences its first auction in 2017. And on sports news tonight, defending champion Novak Djokovic crashes out of the Australian Open. And from Abuja, I'm Ivy Clem. Resident doctors nationwide embark on seven-day warning strike over welfare issues. A new president has been sworn in for the Gambia. Mr. Adama Baro, a property developer, was sworn in today in the neighboring Senegalese capital, Dakar. He promised to effect change that's been in the making for decades and pledged liberty and prosperity for all. Our foreign affairs correspondent Amarachi Ubani reports. Hold it with your left hand, please. And please raise your right hand. I don't need the mic. It is D-Day, and despite the challenge of not being able to return home just yet, Adama Barrow is finally sworn in as Gambia's third Barrow. president. Do swear. Do swear. That I will well and truly. That I will well and truly. Execute the functions of the office. Execute the function of the office. Okay. In his inaugural speech, the president said the this was a day Gambians will never Gambia. forget as it is the first time since Gambia became independent that it has changed government through the ballot box. I hereby make a special appeal to ECOWAS, AU and the UN, particularly the Security Council, to support the government and people of the Gambia in enforcing their will, restore their sovereignty and constitutional legitimacy. As the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, I call on all personnel of the armed forces and other security agencies to remain loyal to the Constitution and the Republic. Barrow had been in Senegal days before the inauguration as it became clearer that President Ajame would not step down from power. I am here at the Gambian Embassy um, to swear on Barrow that he's my president from now for three years and then no more Yaya Jam because we don't want him anymore. End of his end. Of. Uh, this has been the day that we have all been fighting for for a very, very long time uh, and now it is here. We are really uh, grateful that we have had so many uh, uh, collaborators in this effort to make it happen. It is not me or it's somebody else, it is all of us. Your mission is very clear. West Africa military forces from Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana, Togo and Mali have been deployed to the Gambian border ready to enforce the transfer of power. Senegalese troops, however, are reported to have entered the Gambia to back Adama Barrow as president. Before now, foreigners began leaving the country as uncertainty grew over the inauguration. Weeks of diplomatic mediation by ECOWAS failed to convince Mr. Jame to step down, compelling the regional body to announce it would resort to the use of force to get Yaya Jame out of office. But Mr. Jame, dug in his heels in the country's parliament on Wednesday, sought to consolidate power by endorsing an extension of the government by 90 days. A day before, Mr. Jame had declared a 90-day state of emergency, also approved by the parliament. Mauritanian President Mohamed Oud Abdel Aziz, in a last-minute diplomatic push, arrived in Gambia on Wednesday night to speak face-to-face -face with the man who once said only God could remove him from office. President Abdel Aziz left shortly before midnight when Jame's presidential mandate expired. Mr. Yaya Jame, who has been in power for 22 years, lost in the December 1st presidential election. He initially considered defeat, but turned around days later to reject results and contest them at the Supreme Court.
The court convenes in May to consider the president's request. Meanwhile, leaders around the world have been congratulating the Gambian president, Adam Barrow, on his inauguration. The British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson issued a statement saying the United Kingdom pays tribute to the decisive leadership shown by ECOWAS and the supportive role played by the African Union in ensuring that the democratic wishes of the Gambian people will be respected. He said the United Kingdom has a long and historic relationship with the Gambia and he looks forward to working closely with President Barrow's government to further develop the already strong bilateral economic links. Representatives from all of the UN Security Council member states present at the inauguration ceremony gave their congratulations. Later, the US ambassador to Senegal said it was important that the United States promotes democracy in the Gambia and that the United States is delighted to work together with Mr. Barrow for the good of Gambians. The AU Commission chief tweeted her congratulations and said she hopes and prays that the situation normalizes soon so that President Barrow can concentrate on serving Gambians. Meanwhile, the order by President Mohamedou Buhari for the deployment of troops has been criticized in the Senate. In a motion, Senator Chukuma Utazi said that President Buhari violated the Constitution by deploying troops to the Gambia without the approval of the National Assembly. But his argument was countered by the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki, who explained that constitutionally, the President may deploy soldiers on a limited combat duty outside Nigeria. The Nigerian Air Force confirmed on Wednesday that it had deployed 200 soldiers, some fighter jets and other equipment to Senegal, for an eventual mission in the Gambia. On Tuesday, January the 18th, the Nigerian Air Force sent 200 troops to the Republic of the Gambia ahead of the inauguration of the country's president-elect, Adama Barrow. Five of the But this lawmaker says by deploring the troops, the president failed to obey Section 4 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. He says in future, the approval of the Senate must be obtained. Notwithstanding the foregoing provisions of, the, of this uh, section, a, pres a, a president shall not declare a state of war between the Federation and another country except with the sanction of a resolution of the both houses of the National Assembly sitting in a joint session. But to ask that this country will go on uh, a warfare in another country without, coming to, without a recourse to this uh, constitutional provision is an affront on the, on the, on the on 1999 Constitution. The Senate President notes the point of order made and to put the matter to rest, the Senate President explains that President Mohamed Buhari still has a seven-day window to notify the Senate of the troops' deployment to Gambia. The session goes on to say, notwithstanding the, subs the provision of subsection 4 of this section, the President, in consultation with the National Defense Council, may deploy members of the Armed Forces of Federation on limited combat duty outside Nigeria if he's satisfied that national security is under threat. But more importantly, provided that the President shall, within seven days of actual combat engagement, seek the consent of the Senate. And the Senate day after give, give or refuse the said consent. Even though the Senate President said the matter will not be open for a debate, the Deputy Senate President was allowed to offer another perspective. Now the operational one that affects us here is the B. Except with the prior approval of the Senate, no member of armed forces of the Federation shall be deployed on combat duty outside Nigeria. So you don't need to worry about what just take note of this. And it has nothing to do with war, we're not at war with anybody. But for you to, to send a Nigerian and for a member of the Nigerian force outside Nigeria, this Senate must be stood. The matter was then laid to rest. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News. In the meantime, the economic community of West African states has formally approved the deployment of troops to the Gambia. In a statement signed by Nigeria's Minister of Defense, Mr. Mohamed Dan Ali, the federal government explains that ECOWAS decided in a meeting to use its standby force in upholding the results of the presidential election held in the Gambia, which produced Mr. Adama Barrow as winner. The minister adds that in line with the ECOWAS directive, the Nigerian military will deploy its assets 
to protect the people of the Gambia and maintain regional peace and security. Now, the decision by ECOWAS to use force followed Mr. Jammer's refusal to step down after several visits and a lot of persuasion. Now, let's look at the diplomatic aspect of this now. And joining me now from Abuja is the former deputy head of the African Union Commission, Mr. Lai Inyoda. Thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Now, what would you say about the build-up to where we are right now? A new president sworn in for Gambia, but in Senegal. What, what do you think is the diplomatic, how does this fit diplomatically now? Um, it is well in order for the new president to be sworn in in, in Gambia, in uh, Senegal, but actually on uh, Gambia territory because he was sworn in at the embassy of Gambia in, in Dakar. And uh, the embassy premises is an extension of a uh, Gambian territory in uh, international law. Well, already there are comments. You, um, can, yeah. you can take a cue. Please continue. Yes. From uh, the, the man of... Uh, WikiLeaks taking refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy and the local authorities have not been able to go there because it will amount to violation of the territory of Ecuador. So by, by the same extension. It is under the same uh, Fiona Convention we say the premises of a diplomatic agent cannot be violated. So it is because it is part of the territory, part of the sovereignty of the other states. In this case, the embassy in Gam uh, of Gambia in Dakar is an extension of a uh, Gambian territory. Thank you. Now, already there are comments, uh, I was trying to say earlier, for and against the decision, you know, taken by ECOWAS. At what point does a regional body use force as a last resort? Uh, at the point that the peace of the country is threatened, when there is likelihood of breakdown of law and order, by the former president, Jamais refuser to step down and to hand over to the new president, there's likely to be breakdown of law and order. And that would be threat to peace. And uh, under Chapter 6 of the UN Charter, the UN have a right to take measure in such cases. It is an extension of that power of the UN that the African Union as regional bodies and ECOWAS can use to intervene, to prevent the breakdown of law and order. Now let's look at Mr. Barrow's return. I mean, he obviously does have to come home and take his seat and his place as president. What do you think should be in place on his return? How should he reach out across the aisle? Uh, well, uh, don't forget that uh, President Barrow was elected. He won that election. 43% of a uh, Gambian voter elected him as president. So he has that support of about 43% of the Gambian population. Um, and once he has been sworn in as president, the ECOWA, and uh, by the support of African Union, and I think the UN, because the UN is uh, voting on a resolution uh, about this time in New York to support uh, ECOWAS uh, action in the Gambia. ECOWAS will be ensure that uh, ultimately he entered Gambia to take 
his office as the president because the mandate given to the standby troop which is contributed by Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana and so on is uh, to take all necessary measures to enforce the wishes of the Gambian people right. as expressed in the election of the uh, 1st of December 2016. All right. So to that extent, ECOWA will ensure after this running in, they will ensure that he enter Gambia to take up his mandate as a, the All president right. of Gambia. Former Deputy Head of the African Union Commission, Mr. Lai Iyoda, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on the News at 10 tonight. And in part two, after the break, more on the Gambia as we examine the legal implication of the invasion by the country by Senegalese troops. That's in a moment. Please join us again.